Welcome to High Gluttony. I'm Gretchen. And I'm Becca. And we're two ladies on an adventure. Listen along every 10 days or so as we cook a dish we like, quest about cannabis education, or chat with someone we respect. You can find more information about this episode at highgluttony.com. Thanks for joining us, gluttoneers. Off we go. Let's get to it. We are relaxing. We have a pantry power up back in the mix. It's been a long time. What are you feeling in anticipation of our latest pantry power up? I'm just trying to get through the winter, really. (laughs) (laughs) Just trying to survive. (laughs) That's kind of where I'm at. If I'm being truly honest, it's uh, just struggling a little bit with everything but how are, how are you doing Becca? Oh same I've just been reminiscing or contemplating the fact that I now live back in my hometown ish which is kind of weird and pleasantly surprising I've been enjoying it so much and James and I are constantly talking about the infrastructure here and the way (laughs) that the roads are set up and the grid and the construction projects and the investments and it's so interesting because I think you and I've like briefly talked about this but I don't know if we've like gone into depth about the show how to with John Wilson on HBO but It's so enjoyable. And in one of the recent episodes at this present moment, this will release this much later than we're talking about all of these things. In this present moment, this episode, John comes to Vegas. And a lot of his observations are like the same things that James and I've been saying. So as we were watching it, we were like, yes, yes, yeah, no, yeah, exactly. Yes, yes, yeah, he gets it. No, yeah, it's great. Just like generally feeling happy about being here and kind of surprised at feeling so settled in a place I thought I'd never return to, which is so interesting. Just having lots of thoughts about that, which also is coupled with, you know, lots of weird memories about everything before I ran away that's fun <laughs> I, ha- I have been thinking a lot lately just because California is expensive not because I want to leave California but what it would be like if I ever moved back to Michigan and mm-hmm. uh, I just don't know if I could do it yeah but Vegas seems like a place that no one really grows up I would never think that people have childhoods there you know <laughs> Right, totally. The strip. That's all that exists of Las Vegas. It is totally there for tourists. No one lives there. But hearing you say, I grew up here and it's kind of weird. And I'm like, oh, yeah, that is weird. Yeah. (laughs) No, I know. It's super weird. There's something so appealing about the desert. And James and I are constantly talking about the light. I compare it to the Bay Area in several ways because the Bay Area is beautiful and that blue sky is such a unique kind of blue and it feels so warm and encompassing and the sky here is wildly different day to day and the colors change day to day and they reflect off the mountains very differently and it's just kind of a new experience all the time and I I can't compare it to anything else. I'm excited for when you visit because you might be taken in and then High Gluttony Headquarters might be like a weird random outskirt of Las Vegas. Vegas. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and it's not outside the realm of possibilities. I just totally. need to be there and see how how well I can handle winter time there. So that's the, well, the main concern. It's in the 60s today. Yeah. I mean, we're having very similar weather today. It, it is a good point to make that. It's uh, kind of the same. Totally. That's good. I'm glad you enjoy living there. That is very Mm. nice. (laughs) Yeah, it's a surprise, a pleasant surprise. I think, too, what's nice is that James has never lived in a desert climate at all. Kind of experiencing it with him is kind of experiencing it for the first time again, or at least kind of seeing it with fresh eyes because of his experience. That's kind of fun, too. Yeah, Yeah, it's really nice. I'm feeling good. I'm feeling settled. I'm feeling relaxed. And I think that's a good place to head into what we're making today because we're going to make ketchup. 
which is all about stability. I use ketchup all the time. But before we get into the ketchup piece of what we're doing today, what are you drinking? You've been experimenting so much with your drinks lately. What's on the docket today? It's all about what I have on my bar. So today I've chosen from the Napa Valley Distillery, their ancho brandy. It is a neutral brandy that they've infused with ancho chili pepper. So it's spicy. And then I've mixed that with some tonic water on the theme of putting spices into things. It's a nice spicy drink. So, <laughs> Ooh, that sounds nice. It's a pretty color. I can see it. It's got it's yeah. like a dark caramel. Yeah. Mm. And I've had that for probably two years and not finished it. I thought I would drink it all really fast. But today's the day to get through it, at least. <laughs> yes. Today's the day I was like, we're going to drink this shit. What are you having? I'm enjoying a cannabis infused social tonic, as it says on the label, which is the can, C-A-N-N-T-H-C cocktails, Mm -hmm. like the cans. And this is a cranberry sage. And so it's got five milligrams of THC. Mm, I thought it had CBD, but I can't find it. It's delightful. I'm very much enjoying it. Oh, good. And then I'm pairing that because that's you know, got a little sugar and stuff. So I'm pairing that with a purple punch. So something that's a little more mellowing and that's Pur- got some lemonine and caryophylline and some more CBD. So that's what you're smoking. That's what I'm smoking. Exactly. There's a purple punch because yes. purple punch sounds like it could be another drink that you're pairing you're right. your drink with. So <laughs> you're, you're having this grape. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> A purple punch vape pen. I've uh, found a little container of jelly bean uh, weed from 2018 that I figure I should probably smoke because it's if it's that old, it's probably not going to be good for much longer. So I'm oh. smoking that. Mm, okay. <laughs> Today's all about what Gretchen scrounged up from somewhere. Leftovers. Spring cleaning, almost. Ooh, that's harsh. Ooh, ooh. too old. Too old. How can you tell? It's just bitter or well, either that it's hitting the spice at the back of my throat and that smoke is not <laughs> making it any better. <laughs> Got it. Conflicting <laughs> flavors doesn't, here. Doesn't taste very good either. Going to keep smoking it, but <laughs> glad I'm getting rid of it. We are making ketchup today, which uh, I was a little surprised when you said, could we make ketchup? Uh, yeah, we fucking can make ketchup. I think I said, is it hard to make ketchup? Because <laughs> we're tired. <laughs> Yeah, we wanted to make something that would be fun, but also kind of easy, right? Not too hard. No, I mean, it's just tomatoes, onions, some spices, a sweetener and vinegar. And then you cook that and puree it. And there you go. We both love ketchup, as we learned in Freets and have talked about other times, I'm sure. But ketchup is a staple. It's a good go-to. And it feels like these are often ingredients you kind of have around if you just are a person who has, you know, canned tomatoes and mother spices often. But it can be something that you make fairly frequently. Yeah, you could. But also don't expect to make Heinz tomato ketchup at home. You should want it to be a little bit different because some of the articles I read, achieving that distinct, perfect Heinz Mm -hmm. ketchup texture is a little challenging. But on the other hand, you can then make your ketchup entirely your own. So you can use whatever you want in it, really. Our recipe today came from America's Cookbook and originally included red pepper. And Becca said, can we not with the red pepper? And I said, yeah, of course. We can do whatever. We can totally not. Yeah. We can totally not do that. We'll just put in extra <laughs> onion and go from there. Mm-hmm. So don't be afraid to play with your ketchup if you're going to make ketchup. <laughs> I love it. And then once we started talking about ketchup, of course, both of us were fascinated in its origin and all these other questions about it because it's so simple, but it seems like something we kind of take for granted. And of course, probably has like a much more complicated history than we're taking into account. And so I know you sort of looked into it a little bit more, but where does ketchup come from? How do we know ketchup as it is or what was it? Ketchup probably was nothing like it is now as we think of it, as a tomato-based condiment originally. Although I've seen several different origin stories, but the the general gist seems to be that it comes from Asia somewhere. (laughs) Okay. One version I found says it's a hoiken, a hoiken Chinese word, kate siap 
which I, I probably am not pronouncing that right, but I have no frame of reference for Chinese pronunciation. There's also stories that say it comes from Indonesia and they and it has a sort of similar thing that starts with a K, very similar to- type of name. Most of these sauces, though, were based off fermented fish. Pretty different than yeah. <laughs> what we think of as ketchup or what we know as ketchup today. We have colonialism to thank for this because the English brought it home and tried to replicate it, but did not have the same ingredients. And so they started playing with it. And most of the early English ketchups are somewhere in the realm of like mushroom or something like that, where it would be more of an umami type of flavor. They're kind of that more savory. I think I saw uh, Ward, Worcestershire kind of. Yeah. Worcestershire. Yeah. What Worcestershire. Worcester. 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 I'm sorry. I'm just making you confused now. I'm so confused. I never say it right. James always corrects me, but I, (laughs) Worcestershire. Well, that's definitely what it's spelled like. Right. So that's it. (laughs) All right. So that, so it was kind of, so fish sauce or this other savory sauce, but more like a thinner kind of right thing? yeah it would be okay. a bit more of a garnish or sort of a finishing sauce would be okay. more more the the general idea okay so there's early recipes from the 1690s is the earliest one in print that they found subsequently was printed in Miss Beecher's Domestic Re- Receipt Book it's weird receipt must have had a slightly different term and the uh Virginia housewife in 1824. They, there have been lots of evolution on the, the ketchup front <laughs> since, since the early days. And those recipes in the 1800s, the Miss Beecher's and the Virginia housewife, are those more the ketchup we know today versus that earlier iteration of the fish sauce kind of thing? Not quite. Because I think there would be more along the lines of the mushroom variety because oh, they were also doing because of the things. British influence. Yeah. Okay. So it's really evolved. I, I don't exactly know when the tomato part was introduced, but the Americans definitely seem to have kind of claimed that style of ketchup as our own. Okay. And so once we started making it here, of course, the first few years of industrial ketchup production here were very sketchy apparently quite often the cans and things would explode and oh god at least in the early you know 19th or 20th century they finally kind of got started getting the sterilization stuff right and so the, the things Ugh. weren't exploding anymore anyway oh my god but at one point it was even like advertised as medicine in the early to mid 1800 there were people that were advertising it as medicine and then the bubble kind of burst within about 20 years I think it was the 1820s that it first started and then by the 1840s so many people were doing it that the whole ketchup is medicine industry collapsed on itself I thought that was kind of an interesting concept. yeah a short-lived influence <laughs> a fad if you if you will mm, a napkins diet yeah yeah <laughs> But today we we sort of accept it as a general, just it is tomato based with vinegar, a little bit sweeter, not as much spice to it. America as a whole purchases 10 billion ounces of ketchup annually. Wow. (laughs) Which is three bottles per person. I was like, yeah, that sounds about right. (laughs) At least. (laughs) For me, yeah, I love ketchup. (laughs) Oh my gosh. And then in recent years, the, the markets really started to diversify and you're getting some more of the like specialty gourmet ketchups and Sir Kensington's is probably the biggest brand. They're kind of out there now. They've started to get into more restaurants and things like that. There's, there's definitely a love of ketchup, even though it is not our number one condiment in the U.S., it's actually mayonnaise. I'm not surprised. People, people here love mayonnaise. I mean, people love mayonnaise. It's just, yeah, uh, yeah there's no way around that. But mm, ketchup. Mm, ketchup. Yeah, ketchup. Mm. So we're going to try it at home. <laughs> we're doing this. Oh, my gosh. We're making our ketchup. Ah, I'm so excited. Well, it's interesting you say that so Kensington's has, like, finally made an inroad into sort of the top 
there's kind of only three ketchup brands at this point in America, which is Heinz, Hunt, and what's the last one? Del Monte. Oh, Del Monte, so, yeah. Del Monte. <laughs> the one no one ever thinks about. Right, but is still wildly popular. Today's ketchup, like Gretchen said, isn't that kind of fish saucy ketchup that was originally around the globe. But because a lot of American distributors distribute around the globe, they do sort of cater it to perceived local taste buds. So for example, in England and Venezuela, the ketchup there, the American distributed ketchup is sweeter than the American version. And the American version is a little bit spicier. And then in the Philippines, they have a banana ketchup which just replaces the tomatoes with banana, but it's not supposed to be sweet at all. So I'm very curious about that. Gretchen's making a, oh no, oh no. Thing. No, <laughs> I don't. This is only because I like bananas on their own, mm. but you put it into something and I hate it. <laughs> so funny. I would be so curious. So it's basically just mashed bananas, sugar, vinegar, and spices. So the same thing, but it's dyed sometimes to even resemble a tomato color. Well, that's even worse. Wasn't that interesting? So like you said, even though ketchup is very popular here, it's not the number one condiment in America. It is the number one condiment in in Canada and in Finland. There you go. People in Sweden pour it over their pasta. Oh, I don't like and, that. <laughs> and in some places they use it as a dip for potato chips. I used to do that when I was a kid. I always I would dip it dip potato chips and ketchup yes just like regular potato chips like salt potato chips it's like it's a fry not that different from salsa yeah. either so yeah. I get that but it I don't know that seems so I, wild I didn't think this was weird until I met somebody much later in my life that thought it was the weirdest thing they'd ever seen <laughs> was to have somebody eat potatoes with ketchup or potato chips with ketchup. Why? It's, it's potato. Potato loves ketchup. I don't it's understand. A French, it's a different French fry. Yeah. It's a different French fry. Yeah. I mean, it makes sense. It's just, even you saying it to me now, I'm like, what? Excuse me? I know you're making a face. That's why I commented. It's that other people have also found it. Weird. It is not weird. We're weird. And then the last thing is that supposedly in Eastern Europe, it's used as a topping on pizza, oh, gross. which again, <laughs> but not gross because what's the real difference between marinara then? Well, marinara doesn't usually have vinegar, quite as much vinegar in it, but <laughs> I get your point. Right. Yes. If it's okay chip to French fry, then it should be okay French fry to pizza, but no, I don't follow. No, you it's that. not the same. <laughs> Hamburger to pizza, hamburger bun to pizza. Okay, there, there. Okay, okay. A, that that, that <laughs> okay. comparison works for me. Okay, yes. okay. So I thought that was kind of interesting. It is. It's fascinating. <laughs> now we know lots of ways it's used. Let's talk about what we're putting in our ketchup today. And as Gretchen said, our recipe is coming from America's Cookbook. We quartered the recipe, right? Yes. Because it was massive. So we quartered it and we're using one quart of tomatoes peeled. I'm using canned. Are you using canned? Yes, I'm using whole peeled canned, but you could use chunks or sauce because if you want to cut out some time, we could have just used sauce. I mean, <laughs> and then one medium onion chopped, two teaspoons of salt, one tablespoon of sugar, but you can add more if you want, one half teaspoon celery salt, one half teaspoon ground mustard, one quarter teaspoon paprika, three fourths teaspoon whole allspice, which I don't have, three fourths teaspoon whole cloves. I'm using ground, <laughs> one stick of cinnamon, which Gretchen I don't have, <laughs> and one half cup vinegar. And I'll, I'm using rice wine. And I'm using apple with a little bit of rice wine because I didn't quite have enough apple. <laughs> Okay. And then what are we doing with those ingredients? What's our, our overview steps here? Overview. We are going to cook our onions and tomatoes together until they are soft. We're going to blend those up. You're going to be using a blender blender. I'm going to use an immersion blender. Then after that step is done, we're going to add all of our spices and seasonings. We are cooking rapidly until it's reduced by about half. Then we will be adding our vinegar 
and then cook until it's very thick and store it in a clean container. Okay. What special equipment will we need today? A blender and something to put it in and a pot. I love it. It's and very, what world very simple. level? So simple. What world level are you thinking? <laughs> I'm going to say it's a world level one. Since it's just so simple, it takes a little bit of time. And especially if you're not trying to aim for anything in particular, you're just looking for a richly flavored, tasty sauce. That's all you really need. To put on your burger, to dip your chips into, to pour on your pasta or pizza. Gretchen's still making a face. No. Just, no, I can't. I can't <laughs> handle the idea of ketchup on pizza. I can't do or it. Or pasta, it seems. Yeah. Pa- well, pasta's... N- yeah, pasta is still weird, but I'm not going <laughs> to hate on it quite as much. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so should we just get started on our tomatoes then? And our onions? Yeah. What temperature are you going to put your pan at? Probably medium. Yeah. Okay. I'm going to smash up my tomatoes with, with my hands here. Okay. Just a little bit so that when I go to blend it later, it'll be easier. That makes sense. Because the tomatoes are already soft. We're really just cooking it to get the onions soft. And maybe like combine the flavors. Right. Yes. Start your okay. uh, your flavor integration. Oh, okay. Yeah. That's what I meant. So I'm going to kind of just put that all in there. I'm going to throw a lid on here just because it needs to warm up. And I want it to do that more quickly. Without losing moisture. Right. right. Or, Okay. Because our second cook is when we're going to really take the moisture out. So right now we're really just trying to break down our onions so they're soft. Woo! Man, that uh, that ancho stuff is spicy. (laughs) I guess so. (laughs) It just aerosolizes a little bit up into my nose. (laughs) Okay, so we've got our tomatoes and onions simmering away. I thought it could be cool we both were interested in what ketchup c-a-t-s-u-p versus ketchup k-e-t-c-h-u-p where that whole situation came from so (laughs) both words are derived from that ketchup that Gretchen was talking about that like pickled fish sauce but it did eventually make its way to Malaysia where it became ketchup K-E-C-H-A-P and K-E-T-J-A-P in Indonesia. So ketchup and ketchup. And then ketchup and ketchup both became interchangeable at some point. So the ketchup, as we know it with the K, is obviously much more popular today. But the C version probably dates to a different romanization of the same word and so Hmm. I don't know what that means but there's maybe (laughs) like some dialect thing that influenced those differences it also seems like at some point somebody wanted to just like make it sound not like this English version so they just slightly changed it a little bit in 1800 like Gretchen was saying the most common version was the K Mm -hmm. in England but in the U.S., it was the C version. Oh, and interesting. Yeah, super weird. They never really like canceled each other out. They both just coexisted for a long time. But you would see here in the U.S. both versions. I guess it was not until 1988 that Del Monte changed the spelling to K. <laughs> and Hunt's And Heinz changed it much earlier on to try to distinguish themselves from any of the other competitors here in the U.S. And Uh, so once they did that, most other places followed suit. And Del Monte held on to it all the way into the 1980s because they were trying to distinguish themselves then from Heinz and Hunt. All of it, though, is the same here in the U.S., At this point, there's no real difference and there wasn't a huge difference to begin with. It's just this slight variation that became common in one place and the slight other variation became common in the other place. So that's Yeah, not a lot of mystery. I thought I was hoping for more of, yeah, and then this happened and then (laughs) this happened. But mostly it was like, 
well, this one just kind of became popular here and people don't really know why. And then this one just kind of became <laughs> popular here. But now, because America distributes everywhere, it's just, you know, catch up. <laughs> well, that, yeah, it's disappointing how generic most of food history is. <laughs> Like, yeah like, no one really knows what happened here oh. yeah. <laughs> so my tomato stuff is boiling okay I'm gonna turn mine up just a little bit because it's, it's got a not, little simmer but it's not it doesn't seem I don't think it's gonna break down for a little while still so our tomatoes and onions are soft I'm getting my very soft very soft getting my immersion blender out you know you're gonna have okay. a little extra step now, you, you do know about blending hot things, right? Tell me about it. Number one thing is when you're blending anything that's hot, you don't want to have a ton of volume because the, the heat is going to expand. So you can't, A, put it in a sealed container because <laughs> things will explode. Well, if you put too much in, it has the potential to blow the top off and then you have a hot mess everywhere. You don't want to fill up your blender quite as much. So you may need to do it in two batches just to make it safer for yourself mm -hmm. and make sure you're not putting a closed, closed top on. You want to put the top on, but take the little plastic Use that plastic the hole. So that's okay. your main concerns. <laughs> I'm going to do, I'm going to pour half in and show you and let you tell me if you think that's too much or not well we also yeah need to know how big your blender is <laughs> there you go yeah exactly so let me put half in and then I can do, and then I can let mm -hmm. you know because if it's a yeah. big blender maybe all yeah will work. It, it might you might be able to do all of it once yeah because mine's okay. cooked down a fair amount so it's not if I had a good size blender I wouldn't be necessarily worried about blending the whole thing at the same time okay that makes sense and also still just need to be really careful. <laughs> yes. Yes. Be careful because it's hot. Um, okay. Let me show you. I ended up doing me? all of it because it didn't feel like. Oh, you're fine. Yeah. You've got okay. room. Yeah. <laughs> volume. Volume is a key here. That was why I was like, okay. wait, wait, wait. If it's a Vitamix and it's huge. It's an eight. You cup. might be fine. Yeah. So you're fine. Okay. So... But I'm still going to leave the plastic. Yes. Thing out. Yes. Okay. Yeah. All right. Blending. Okay. Another nice thing about homemade uh, homemade ketchup is it doesn't need to be super thin. You know, it doesn't need to mm. be super smooth. It can be a little chunkier if you want. Yeah, or I always it can be super smooth. Or it can be super smooth. It's up to you. Love it. I always thought ketchup was a, an offshoot of chutneys. <laughs> hmm. So I was kind of surprised when we started doing the research at, but because that was why I thought the sea where, where the sea came from was that it was sort of oh. an offshoot of chutney. And so they were using the C, but no, none of that is true. I had made that up <laughs> entirely in my head. <laughs> well, they're not wholly different, right? They're no. just not the same. No, not at all. Okay, so then for me, mine goes back into my pan on the stove, right? And mine is still in my pan on the stove. Okay, and I'm going to bring the temperature back up to the low kind of situation. Yeah. Okay. All right, so we're going to add everything except for the vinegar. I know like the step actually I had written in there says that we're adding the vinegar, but I forgot that they said to add it later. And I think that's okay. just to help preserve some of the flavor from the, the vinegar. So now what's going in are our spices and sugar and salt. Yes. Okay. I love the color of the all the spices. Yeah. The colors of all the spices. I also added a little black um, garlic to my ketchup here I Ooh, have some fun black cr garlic crystals I bought at Trader Joe's and I was like mm, that would be kind of an interesting flavor to throw in there mm. since this particular recipe doesn't actually have any garlic in it oh forgot my mustard <gasps> my ground clove is kind of cloying on my tongue mm. what do I do more salt <laughs> yeah more salt yeah okay and maybe and the vin just remember you're also going to add vinegar so that might oh you're right out some too good reminder thank you so that, yeah hopefully it's more spicy than than cloyingly sweet there's just something on my tongue oh how much how much did you put in the three quarters of a teaspoon yeah because it's ground it might be a uh, bit more intense ah well that's just fitting. Just because, and then also because it does have that anal, uh, the sort of analgesic quality to it. If it's really hitting your tongue, you might be getting like a more of a sensation than an actual flavor. So you could uh -huh. balance, 
balance that out a little bit with like if you want to add a little like cumin or oh, something maybe like a that. little more paprika yeah or a little more paprika if you want to make it spicier okay and just sort of balance that. that sweet spice out with something a little bit more spicy or yeah spicy <laughs> spicy or spicy okay spicy or spicy love it i was gonna I'll say do savory sm- i'll do some smoked paprika there you go a little smoky action yeah I've had mine on low just because it keeps sputtering because it's that thick consistency. And so I don't want to put it up too high. I don't want, also don't want to spend forever stirring this to get it to reduce. Sure. I am slowly raising the heat here. Let's see if I can get it to (laughs) reduce a little bit faster without sputtering all over me. Although I'm just constantly stirring it too. So it's can't get away from it. (laughs) So when do we add the vinegar then? I'm going to add it in, the, in a few minutes once I think it's reduced some. Okay. I'm going to crank it up and hope okay. that the stirring will help from keep it from sputtering too okay. much at me. Also wondering that if I put tomato paste in here, that would definitely help thicken it up because co- tomato paste is like tomato concentrate. Mm-hmm. And so that might help absorb some of the water. So that mm-hmm. might also be a good solution for you if you have any tomato mm-hmm. paste on hand. Okay, let me look. Just sort of dilute out that clove a bit. Butter. That's like numbing my tongue. <laughs> oh no. I mean, not like, you know. Really. I know. Shit, I should have warned you. <laughs> well, it's okay. <laughs> I didn't think about that. Well, that's all right. It's not an unpleasant experience. <laughs> good. Oh, good. Okay. As long <laughs> as it's not horrible. <laughs> it just doesn't taste great, but. <laughs> <laughs> well, we aren't we aren't at full flavor development yet here either so good point so we're getting a little reduction going on our ketchups here but just remember that this is entirely in your control you can take this to whatever texture you actually want so if you want a bit more of a thinner type ketchup you might want to stop somewhere around now like we have it's definitely maybe slightly thicker than a marinara is what i would say at, my, mm-hmm. at least that's where mine is Mm-hmm. Same. I am going to add my vinegar now. So okay. now that I think the be careful about the adding the vinegar is to make sure you don't get blasted in the face with a bunch of vinegar steam. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh, mine's not turned up high enough to do anything of that kind. And I'm going to crank it up. Okay. So that just added a, a, a nice amount of liquid here. So now we have to re-thicken. And we have to re-thicken. For how long? Uh, I'm probably going to just do 10 minutes if I can get the heat hi- up high enough here. That okay. I don't want to go with a long, slow cooks, which would be normally how I would reduce something like this. Because I've actually tried to make ketchup before and made it wrong. Because I was like, oh, you must just cook it on low and for a long time. Well, no, you can't because then it turns like a weird dark brown color. <laughs> hmm. Unappealing. Yeah. So you definitely are looking for like a higher, faster heat on this to get it reduced so that you keep that color nice and bright. Okay. That vinegar really helped with the clove too. Did it? Oh, good. Mm-hmm. I'm glad. The clove's still very- pretty pervasive, but not as... Well, intense. clove is a strong thing. And I really, really should have thought about when you were saying, I'm going to use ground, but I needed to be telling you to half the amount. <laughs> well, clove has a lot of good benefits for you, as we learned once. It is good for you. I should probably taste mine. How's yours? Pretty good. Okay. Let's see, where do I need to go with mine? Mm, it needs a little more salt. Not a lot. We got vinegar doing a lot of that, a lot of heavy lifting in there. And then I might add a touch of hot crystal hot sauce here. Ooh. That is my favorite kind of hot sauce. I wasn't expecting a hot sauce. Why go with powder when you can use liquid? Totally integrate, Integrates a little bit faster. Ooh, hot, hot, hot. <laughs> I've got my, I got it up on medium heat. So if I don't spend it, if I'm not constantly stirring, it's de- developing little calderas that are boiling out <laughs> of the pot and splattering at me. Oops. Cook ba- faster, damn it. <laughs> faster, and then what's damn. after this? Put it in a container and enjoy. Okay. And this is really, yeah, once you get it to the consistency you want, you're done. Oh my gosh. Maybe one of our fastest pantry power-ups? <laughs> <laughs> Probably. I mean, everything's been faster than pistachio paste. So, Ugh. yeah. <laughs> Don't remind me. Oh, oh but sorry. it tasted so good. No, I'm just But kidding. it is so <laughs> good. Yeah. I <laughs> know. Yeah. One of those things that's almost worth the effort. <laughs> well, should we call it? Should we call it? I think so. Yeah. Especially since yeah. I think you can reduce at your own, re- at your own thing here. <laughs> Ooh, hot. Woo. Yeah. 
but yeah, my, my flavors are good. I, you know, almost want to try putting some garlic in here at some point. If I did mm. it again, I'd maybe uh, put in some garlic. Fresh garlic and or garlic powder? Fresh garlic. Okay. I think that might be one of the few things I'd want to do. Cool. But it is your, the, the world is your oyster as far as ketchup that made at home goes. So whatever you yeah. want to do with it, do it. The ketchup is my world. <laughs> All right. Okay. As always, the recipe will be on highgluttony.com and we'll have pictures on social media. Like and subscribe. Tell six or seven friends, maybe 15, 20, everybody you know. Tell everybody. Yeah. Yeah. That sounds fun. And thank you for for joining joining us. us. (laughs) Off we go. Off we go. Sounds to be added later. Sounds to be added later.